what was the most interesting discovery you made in the in the in the process of making this? What surprised you the most? About well, you know, a lot of times people ask me, like, how are you going to make Bobby Fischer sympathetic? You know, he turned into this raving anti-Semite, you know, like King Lear on the Blasted Heat, somebody once said, just like babbling all this anti-American stuff. And to me, actually, that wasn't the challenge. The challenge was because at the end of the day, when you see Bobby as this young man coming up um, and then you see what happened to him, it's so clearly, you know, evidence of his mental illness and it's just a tragedy. Um, you know, really some of the hardest stuff was getting people to open up about Bobby. People were fiercely loyal to him. Bobby saw the world in black and white. There was no neutral, you know, like the chessboard. And if you were if you were not totally loyal to him, if there was any sort of confrontation to him, you know, he disowned you. Um, so getting people to open up was the biggest challenge. And, you know, there were some that we lost along the way, but, you know, enough that came through. Yeah. In terms of, you know, that aspect of it, you, how polarizing a figure he became, I mean, yourself as American and Jewish and him spouting anti-American and anti-Jewish sentiment. Perfect. Yeah. With, like, does it does that sort of attitude does it take a toll on you at all as a filmmaker as you watch through this footage? Yeah, you know, it's I never, you know, there was never anything that Bobby said most horrendous anti-Semitic or anti-American stuff that actually offended me. I mean, he called, you know, Bobby loved calling into radio shows, so we cut like into the Philippines and Japan, all over, like in Hungary, he had all these. So we like combed the earth and we got all these radio call-ins, and so we were about had sixty or seventy hours of Bobby ranting, which I listened to. And, you know, it makes you crazy. I mean, some of his ideas were as crazy. He talked about, like, that the Jews didn't like elephants because of their penis, like, and it reminded them of castration. I mean, in, it, like, totally, like, off-the-wall stuff. And it was so off-the-wall that it was hard to be, actually be offended by it, you know? Um, so, so, no, it was, it was, it was a sign of a, of a decline of a, of, a, of a great man. So it was, it was really a tragedy. Yeah, it was more about the madness made, made what he said less... Offend. Intrusive and offensive. It didn't offend me, yeah. yeah. With HBO coming on board this documentary, how early did they come on board and how easy or hard does that make that process? HBO came on board really early on. Um, you know, I have another producer named Stanley Buckthall and we, you know, he, we took it around and HBO came on board really early. So they were involved through the whole shooting and editing process and giving notes. But truthfully, they are so filmmaker friendly um, and they're not like interested in like programming your, your documentary and sticking into a little slot in a box. And it was funny because I had a conversation with one of my executives the other day and the running time that we ended on was 93 minutes, which is kind of like the worst running time for HBO because they have like 27 <laughs> minutes left to fill. But they were like, you know what, the film's good, you're gonna leave it that way. And so it's like, that's the creative process with HBO. It's like, what is the best film? They don't look at it as TV shows. Um, they look at it as, you know, they support you as a filmmaker. And so the process is always just one of like enriching the film. It must also be, it changes the dynamic of you coming to the festival because you're not here wondering if your film's gonna sell or hoping it'll sell. You can come here and enjoy and watch the audience reaction and really just experience it as a pure filmmaker audience uh, participation. Right, having HBO on board, it certainly like, takes away like a major, you know, it was a major, you know, thing to sell the US market. But we're selling, we're still selling all over the world. It's gonna open theatrically in, in the UK and in Australia. So all these international deals have been going on as well. Do you play chess? Um, I don't play chess well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thanks for coming in and spending a few minutes with us. We appreciate it and congratulations again. Thanks.